Hi guys, my name is Carl and I'm from the All Balls channel. Today we have another All Balls special. We have a really really special guest as well with us today. Not only is he central to FC Goa's midfield, he's also the heartbeat of the Indian national men's setup. Glenn Martins, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you so much. How's it going? How's the day gone so far? It's it's going good. I just came back from the training. Sometimes uh-huh. like just got fresh, had my refreshments, and I'm here. Oh well, all just up and ready to go. So, Glenn, I yes. got to start off with the first question. Um, how did football come into your life? I think I, it all started like in the family. My elder brother mm-hmm. also used to play. So from that time, also when I was at the age of ten, I also started playing football for a local team, local club, in the under twelve, mm-hmm. and. From there, I started playing for my school team, and then moved on to the Franca Sports Club, a club there I played under 12, under 14, and then moved mm-hmm. to Welsa Welsa Pali Sports Club. It's uh, basically from my village. Mm-hmm. And then after my SSC, I joined the Cesar Football Academy, where I spent four years. Yeah. And, and, you know, like, again, you come from, like, when when did you realize, actually, sorry to, to interject, but when did you realize that you wanted to take football professionally? When was it, like, when it just clicked in your head, like, I can do this for a living, like, you know, I'm good at this. Yeah, I think it's when I joined the academy. I think mm-hmm. I got to understand uh, football, like, a lot about football because mm-hmm. we, I met a lot of coaches and then new teammates. Then I, then, then I was among new people new teammates. So I think that was the time I realized I can make a living of football. Absolutely. I mean, you mentioned CESA football F- FA and you also mentioned Sporting Goa. That was your youth and formative years. And then yes. you also later on to play in your professional career, in your first professional career, you played for Sporting Goa and then moving up a level towards ATK Mohan Bagan and FC Goa. Tell us how was that transition? How was the, the move up and what did it feel like? Yeah, it was really a great to be playing in the top league. Actually, it was difficult also for me since I spent a lot of time in Sporting Club de Goa. I spent there five seasons mm-hmm. where, where I could not... I just played in the Goa League for three seasons and I could not play in the I League or in the ISL also. No. So, so then I then I made the move to Churchill Brothers. I played there for a season. Mm. From Sporting, I, I joined Churchill for a season. I played there for a, one season and from there, I got the offer from ATK. And it was really amazing when I came to know, okay, I'm getting back like where I wanted to, like I had my goal. I was uh-huh. really happy. I was really happy to join ATK in the ISL and then moving to FC Goa. I think from then on, life totally changed. That's right. So now, uh, Glenn, you're a local, you're a local going boy. Football is literally a way of life. In Goa, you know, like most people, are like the rest of the country where everyone's kind of cricket crazy and stuff, like Goa seems to be football mad. Now, you being a youngster who's come up from, you know, the grassroots to a professional level, how would you say has the landscape of football in Goa changed? Uh, like now, uh, like everyone is focusing more on the grassroots, but before it was not that much, but now I think everyone is focusing more on the grassroots program like there are many teams like everyone is having a underage team so i think mm-hmm. there are it's a good opportunity for the youngsters to learn a lot of new things and yeah because at my time i used to play like i started playing on the road and then in the fields with my friends and then from then on i joined the uh, like under 15 under 12 under 14 team and i think now it's very much better. Every everything, the grounds and everything are improving. So it's really a great. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad because again, you're a local and you know how you've seen it transition. So I'm sure like it's so much more better to have grassroots football encouraged yeah. at such an early age. You know, uh, glad. I need to ask you though. I mean, who do you think have been the most influential individuals in your progression as a pro- professional football players? Any people you could name who have really inspired you to take up the game? I think my parents, they have been with me from the beginning. And I think uh-huh. till today, I remember from like from the under 12 till today, I think they have not missed a single match of mine. Mm-hmm. When I play in Goa, they have been attending all the matches. My mom, my dad and my grandfather. 
they have been mm-hmm. attending all the matches in goa so i think my mom and dad like they have been really behind me from the start and i'm really thankful for them absolutely i mean it's always i mean they always say it starts at home you know you get the inspiration yeah. from home and to have that kind of backing nothing beats family more than ever but would you also like to like mention any coaches or or players you know that you played with that you think have kind of up your game or inspired you yeah i think i have a very good relation with rolin bojis mm-hmm. we both are very good friends of the field like so we always talk about football what we not, need to do what we need to improve even during the off season we both train together mm-hmm. i think he has been really helpful for me from the my career because when i when i was sporting also he used to like he was my senior mm-hmm. and he helped me a lot he used to always till today he he is the one guiding me and helping me a lot to improve my game every day so well, now I mean, we are from... t- teammates yeah so now we are obviously teammates in the national team you are the teammates of the national team but rivals probably on the on the club circuit so yeah i think it's a friendship made in heaven that way so now grant we're going to go into a part of the 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 show that we like to call explain a grant all right it's a little bit of a segment in where we dive into a few pictures of your social media in which you can give us a lot more in depth descriptions of all right so we're going to start off with our first picture here which we're going to have a look at so grant this is you and your india colors i'm guessing this was your debut as well so debut, give us yes. a more better uh, give us a better description of this what was the feeling like and experience i'm sure it's every footballer's joy to be representing their country i know it's it was my dream and i think every footballer kid it's it's their dream also to play for the national team and it actually mm-hmm. a really a great feeling when you stand for the national anthem it's it's completely different like you have a totally different feeling and it was really amazing for me I mm-hmm. like I I will never forget this day of my life. I think this is the best day of my life. So you would you consider this as one of your you would consider this as one of your greatest achievements. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Like yes, the greatest. I think and the best. I will never forget this day. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll move to the next uh, picture over here. Ah, now I remember this. This is when he scored that absolute worldly against mumbai city fc out of nowhere so what was running through your head i mean i'm sure you were definitely aiming for goal but you pinned it perfectly so what went through your head to just say okay fine i'm going to take a shot at this time our team was down with two goals uh huh we were down with two goals and everyone was like fighting back and we needed that like once moment we were playing good but we mm-hmm. just like did not score but at that time like so when i got the ball i had a lot of time on the ball like mm-hmm. then i thought like i had scored goals like this before but i think this is the best goal of my career till now mm-hmm. so then Absolutely. i thought like yeah so i thought i had time on the ball so i just took my time and it got connected really well <laughs> you just popped it in I, yeah and i just saw the ball inside the net i did not see anything else i just saw the ball inside the net <laughs> I, i did not see it traveling <laughs> well i mean I think dude that's it yeah it's because of this goal i think everyone knows me <laughs> well it's it's a hell of a goal and it's a hell of an impression to make glan i got to say like, I, when yeah. i saw that goal i was like wow that's a hit like that's a really good hit like so i'll give you really good credit for that glan we'll move on to our next picture over here ah now yeah. give us a little description on this what was this all about glan so this was my the my birthday Mm-hmm. like we send one and the uh, picture this was gifted to me by my girlfriend she oh. gifted me this so this was her surprise to me and i think this <laughs> was the best best gift i really like we have been together for 9 years now mm-hmm. i think this is this is my best gift she gave me <laughs> she always <laughs> she always she always surprises me with something or the other for like all my birthdays till today uh-huh. she has been always surprising me with something great and i think this is the best one like i can see all the pictures of me in seza <laughs> sporting chechil fc goa and then the national team no ah, okay so it's got your whole kind of history in one picture basically yes well, that, your your girlfriend is very talented i got to say that glad that's a lovely beauty <laughs> right there <laughs> okay, ah, thank you and for our next one our final picture ah now you were mentioning roland borges 
I just cannot recognize the gentleman on to your left. So now you explain to us the relationship that you have a role in Borges, but give us a bigger description. Okay, I'll tell you the who, who the, the left the guy on the left is Victorino Fernandez. He's also an Indian international. He also played for the national team, and this was mm-hmm. the time when I was the junior in Sporting Club de Goa. Okay, this is the time during the off season. We just went out for a lunch. Mm-hmm. So it was that time, and these other guys like they are still very good to me. Even Victorino, he's very good. Okay. To me. And I think I, I really miss this memory. It's been a long time. We three did not go out. It's been a long time oh. now. It's just now oh. me and Vic, uh, Roland because Victorin is married and he has a kid now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I guess it's just the two of you all now. Like while Victorin yeah. has to just like look after his family, yeah, I guess. His family and everything. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, that ends our segment on the explainogram, uh, Brian. Thank you so much. Uh, now I'm going to come to the second part where it's a little bit more light and a lot more relaxed. Now, Glenn, you you were a, you were basically in Goa, I'm guessing, during the pandemic, and yeah. I'm sure you worked a lot into you know helping your community and stuff. How important is it for a professional footballer to give back to the community? I think it's really important because and it's it's because they look up to you, so you mm-hmm. need to set an example to them also, like doing all the good deeds. Even when you go out, it's necessary. Like only when, when it is necessary, you should go out. Uh, Absolutely. Wearing a mask, yeah, wearing a mask and everything. And I think yeah. it's it's always a great feeling to give something back to the community. It's really a great feeling. I'm sure because it is. I'm sure it is. This, yeah, because these are the people who have been like supporting me also. When I went to a, like, when I was playing in the Goa League only, these are the people who supported me. So it's mm. my time something to give back to them also. Absolutely. I mean, that's a strong base to start off from, you know. Uh, Glenn, what do you like to do when Glenn Martins is not playing football or not practicing football? What are your fun hobbies? What do you like to do when you're not playing football? Basically, I spend most of the time with my family. I just sit with them. And sometimes I go cycling when I like, mm-hmm. I don't do anything. I just like to go put my earphones on and just go for a cycle ride. Mm-hmm. And I like, and I like to go fishing also. No, fishing, like any, yeah. like, like any particular, you mentioned that you said you put on your headphones. What's a particular kind of genre of music that you like to listen to? Is it everything and anything or oh, currently yeah, what are you listening to? Basically, I listen to Konkani music, mm-hmm. like the local music and some mm-hmm. uh, English and Hindi also mix. It's, it's not that particularly I listen to certain music and all, but it's mostly Konkani music. Konkani music. Are you a big fan of Lorna? Yeah, I like her songs. <laughs> Absolutely. Who's not a big fan of Lorna? Yeah. Everybody loves Lorna yeah, and Goa. Yeah, every time. yeah, I think because <laughs> you, whenever you listen to the song, they are very old, but then the, the feeling which you get when you listen to them again and again, it's the same. It's never changing. It's the, yeah, it's the, it's a timeless classics as they like to call them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Glad, you've said that Casimiro is one of your favorite midfielders, like one of your favorite players, you know, you like to watch playing and, you know, maybe also, and you also kind of do mirror him so much, you know, you play the same yeah. kind of defensive midfield role. Um, now, with that being said, if you had to include anyone in your five-a-side team, it can be national, international, deceased or alive, who would you make in your, including you, eh? you're already one member in your five-a-side team. So you need to pick four okay. more members. Who would be your four other members in your five-a-side team? I, okay, it can be national or like you want to just know about the... Anything. Like, you can even anything? you can even pick a legendary player, anyone you admire as well. Like the floor is yours. Okay. Five-a-side, I will take Ronaldinho. Okay, I, that's I will one. Obviously, yeah, I would obviously love to play with him. So, him uh-huh. and Iniesta. All right. Then I will take Casemiro. Oh, obviously. And, yeah, three and I mean the defense. I will take Ramos. Ramos, Sergio Ramos. Yeah, Sergio Ramos. Uh, that, that tough him. man yeah. to go through. Yeah. Also, and the uh, and a goalkeeper, right? I need a goalkeeper. Absolutely, yeah. So, and I, I think I goalkeeper. I will go with Gurpreet because I really I see him and he's really inspiring. Because oh. the way I I saw him in the national team, how he is and. I will obviously like to go with him. 
Absolutely. Well, that's a good team, actually. Yeah, they're a very star-studded team, I have to say, yeah, Glenn. You have really impeccable taste, I have to say that. Now, Glenn, of course, you have the future ahead of you. You're, you're still a young, very footballer. You're, you've just broken into the national team. You're, you're basically thriving right now. But in the near future, where do you see yourself? Do you, do you visualize yourself probably playing elsewhere? Or what do you see yourself after you hang up your boots once you retire? Yeah, I would obviously want to play... My dream is to play in Europe or anywhere abroad. I would obviously mm-hmm. love to do that. But then I should, I think I should also improve a lot to be there. And I think I should work hard on myself. Like, okay, I should, I should keep working hard and just be focused. And I think good things will happen for sure. Definitely good things will happen. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure again, the whole retirement thing is years away from now. Like, but yeah. do you ever consider taking up coaching, managing maybe in the near future? Mm, I don't think so because I think coaching and everything needs a lot of patience, which I think I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? You might learn it. You know, the, the, the years will follow. And then, you know, who knows? You might learn to discipline yourself. You might just think, hey, man, I'm good at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe because you never know. Like, as I grow, I think I've been learning every day. So... Maybe in the future, you never know what can happen. All right. Well, we're down to our last question, Glenn. And this is my own personal question I want to ask you. You're a Goan boy. And again, I'm sure we all know how great Goan cuisine is. But we need to ask Glenn Martins. What is your favorite dish or what is your favorite cuisine in general? Like basically, like you are talking about just Goan? Like my, okay, it can be anything. You can even say it's Goan or it can even be something foreign, something that's probably outside of Goa as well. Yeah, basically, I think I just love to eat fish. Goan fish. Oh, really? <laughs> that, that's that's my favorite. Even now, whenever we, we go out, me and Rolin, it's basically mm-hmm. we have been eating fish, like mostly fish, nothing more than Mostly that. fish. So anything mostly like a good, a good fish tali or a good fish curry is perfect. Yeah, perfect for me. I, I, well, I, then I need to ask you though, as a Goan guy, because I've asked this probably in the past as well. If I have to ask you, in Goa, who would you recommend as the best fish tali? In Goa? <laughs> Basically, we go to As- Asolna. There's one place called Amarela. Okay. There's a restaurant there. So we basically go there just to have fish. Oh, lovely. Well, like there you had it, ladies and gentlemen. Glenn Martins, Asolna, Amarela. You all know where to get the best fish tali. Recommended yeah. by Glenn Martins himself. All right. <laughs> uh, Glenn, again, thank you so much for taking time to have a discussion with us. We've come to the conclusion of our interview. I had a really good time chatting with you. It is a big honor to be talking to you as well. Um, and again, we look forward to seeing you, more news coming from you and just you prospering sure, in the future. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me too. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Cheers. Thank you so much, Glenn. And for those mm-hmm. watching once again, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This was Glenn Martins, I'm Carl Lewis, and we'll see you when we see you.